community of mixed mag which is quite upsetting really especially for my um interest you know you guys know i'm kind of obsessed with nightlife i'm obsessed with club culture i'm obsessed with djs i'm obsessed with just dance music in general and i kind of spend a lot of my time in these places getting absolutely larry having a good time having a dance and seeing my favorite artist but according to mix mag the following has been said right three and four uk nightlife businesses report being on financial cliff edge so everything people are saying about once the pandemic is over and the government tell places that they can reopen again things are going to get back to normal people are going to be steamrolling out of their house and rolling into flipping um clubs to basically enjoy themselves after spending so much time locked indoors what was it 18 months or so under some level of restriction, I knew that that wouldn't be the case the moment I went to my first club night. I kind of had a feeling, I was like, oh, this isn't ever going to get back to pre-2019 era because it felt like, for the most part, many, many people, especially, um, you know, uh, people that had immigrated over here recently to just study or to work, it felt like a lot of those people, especially the Spanish, the French and the Italians had moved back home and had decided they're not going to move back again. I think the pandemic was an, a good kind of excuse to sort of like try to live in the country that you're in at your adult age and enjoy it for what it is because i think a lot of people kind of left those places seeking a better life seeking fun and an adventure in london got here and realized it's not that great it's a cool city don't get me wrong but it's not a place that you should maybe leave your country and stay at forever it's a place maybe to come make some money and dip and go somewhere else but i think long term future wise those other countries i mentioned like spain france and italy they have a way better um, quality of life in general than we do here over here in the uk just think about the weather alone obviously maybe the financial side of things is difficult especially in places like spain the economy isn't the greatest it's pretty hard to get a good decent job but overall overall um it's still a better sort of way of life day to day like i went to like a random random restaurant actually in madrid the other day where i went to have some flipping tapas and whatnot and just there the flipping um beers that they serve you always come in a chilled glass um, the ice cubes that they give you in your glass, um, and if, of course it's free pour, but the ice cubes they give you are incredibly chunky. So even though they free pour the drinks, you don't get totally smashed because they dilute the, the or you know they, they they put enough ice in there to kind of keep you merry and keep you ticking, but not enough to get you absolutely sloshed, which obviously helps them because you end up buying more drinks. But just a, a care and attention to detail in just a restaurant in serving you a beer in a chilled glass to kind of offset the incredibly hot food that you're eating and incredibly hot environment you're in was incredible you don't see that anywhere most places you know especially places like a weatherspoon or other pubs in metropolitan areas some of them they won't even give you a glass cup because of the complaints they've had from previous partners you all come in plastic so imagine that so all of those things kind of made me think that you know what maybe all those people leaving were never going to come back once they went back home again and realize how amazing everything is at home because the grass isn't always greener and then i remember reading the article that i mentioned all the time here from that founder of the nightclub in munich called blitz and he was basically saying that hey it doesn't matter if we reopen right now because i think this is when germany was starting to slowly but surely ease the restrictions especially on nightlife he was like it doesn't matter because the great people that I had working in this club who made the club what it is have now kind of gone away and moved into different industries because I guess during the time of the lockdown he couldn't provide him with any work and those people went and start, started doing other stuff or started to explore other interests or go back to school and they just maybe just got completely turned off for service industry stuff because a lot of people who work those kind of jobs to have an like extended break it maybe made you realise hey do I really want to be spending my time you know being a bar back or working in a restaurant or whatnot and they decided to change course so a lot of those businesses are suffering and this is probably um, something that maybe extends to the UK as well a lot of the good places are essentially struggling to fill up their staff up I've seen you know many many posts many posts from clubs basically asking for help for people during the weekend and stuff so there's clearly an issue there but anyway the article itself says as follows more than a quarter of nightlife businesses including promoters clubs and even event organizers have reported being on a financial cliff edge the nightlife industry is currently seeing the detrimental effects of the cost of living crisis which threatens to force closure on nearly a quarter of nightlife businesses just in months the nightlife industry's association which is called the ntia issue a flash poll earlier this week to to show the impact of inflation on these businesses that found that they're barely breaking even god damn it man of those surveyed three out of the four businesses reported that they were either breaking even or losing money almost a quarter um said that they were not surviving the next few months i knew it was a problem the moment i went to my first fold rave honestly and i went to a couple of other kind of big ticket items or raves like seeing dixon and whatnot but the first time i knew it was kind of over in terms of clubs in general and then not returning back to, 
post you know, to pre 2019 days was when I went to fold because fold I felt like when I went there especially when the lockdown is all I saw were hardcore ravers I didn't see general punters and that's one of the one things that kind of makes clubbing what it is the mix between club kids um you know um chin strokers or whatever it may be and just regular punters who have nowhere else to go on a weekend or after dinner and just want to hang out and dance and have a drink do you know what I mean? They obviously fill in the gaps, but obviously a lot of these places take those people for, for, for granted. So now that those people have moved on, had babies, like a lot of the friends that I used to go out with have got hooked up, have got hitched up, have had babies, have started families, have big ones, have gone into other industries, have started businesses and whatnot. They don't really have time to rave anymore. They've kind of all been raved out. So a lot of it has never really returned back. And then all the younger kids coming up, I remember someone mentioning it prior, another video I put out there, they're basically saying a lot of the younger kids just don't have the money to basically go to nightclubs. So they're doing alternative things they're maybe booking airbnbs they're doing forest raves they're doing warehouse raves they're hanging out at home they're going to pirate studio and buying drinks and getting licked in there many many things are happening so the whole clubbing thing is the sort of um the, the pillar was the kind of pulpit was placed on is definitely not there anymore it continues um, 80.6% 80 of nightlife businesses surveyed have been have seen a decrease in footflow, while 82 have seen revenue decrease in just the three months. A quote: As a number of falling businesses, we engage. Sorry, as a number of failing businesses, we engage with Escalate on a day-to-day -day basis. With many business owners and operators emotionally and mentally drained, drained for over three years of uncertainty, questions are quite rightly being asked of the government and its plans for the sector, says the NTIA's Michael Kill. The time is quickly running out, with hundreds of businesses already unable to hold on, making irreversible decisions about their future without, with thousands of jobs, with thousands of jobs um, lost or at risk. Big up Michael Kill too. He's always putting it on the government in terms of um, their you know, lack of response or lack of help considering everything to do with the nightlife industry. So bless him for always putting it out there. And it says it continued. Um, when asked what kind of relief could be given to their survival, almost 85% of businesses punted to VAT reductions, while 68.8% said an energy freeze or cap would be enormously helpful. The government said to explore the cost of living crisis further on Friday. Um, it says here the quote on Friday we need to concise and detailed plan from our government on how they engage and support uh, us with this crisis. Nothing less than this is acceptable. So let's see what happens going forward. Let's see what happens going forward.